first of all, gentlemen, mm. let's have a little chat about Paragon, which is a game that... Exactly. That little shrug you made, that's what I would say every time someone said Paragon to me. It sort of existed in that, in that to coin Chris Waters, that melange of <laughs> MOBA, Overwatch, Battleborn, Battlecry. It was all kind of in there together. Mm. Uh, but the, I guess the, uh, the closed alpha, it's still closed at the moment. So I think they're opening it up later in spring. We got access to it a couple of days ago. Uh, and I've been playing a lot of it, and it, I'm actually kind of super into it for somebody who's never really been into MOMAs but who loves games like Unreal Tournament yeah. so I want to kind of ask you guys about, about this as well because we've all kind of played it I know you played a bit of it today Eric yeah. uh, Mike how much have you played of Paragon? Um, I've played a, a few hours probably around eight total um, I did the preview event for it a mm. couple weeks ago and then I played a little bit once we had the access and uh, yeah I like it it's it's definitely like starts from like uh, Epic's action roots, yeah. like the third person action, you know, like which they're known for. And uh, yeah, it translates really well. It's definitely a MOBA, more, even more than like Battleborn has that one incursion mode, which yes. we also have access to now, but we haven't been able to get any matches. Um, but this is very much like a MOBA, but yeah. in third person yes. and like very action focused. It, uh, yeah. it is one map. There are three lanes. Yep. There are towers that you knock down. There is a core you need to explode. And yeah. it's 5v5 as well. Yep. Uh, and it has some element of shop in it as well. In the card packs, it's got a jungle, which in this case is yep. a forest, mm -hmm. which you were saying has most of its textures have yet to grow. Yeah, it, it says like alpha. It's in alpha. The, <laughs> so don't worry about the mobs. You know, they're, they're going to look better probably. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just kind of shells of what you would fight in a jungle. But yeah, it, it, it as all intents and purposes, is a traditional, you know, MOBA. Yeah. Except, except for third person, I guess. So th except for third person, and I guess also the thing that is different between this and most MOBA games is that most MOBA games, isometrically, you're, most of your targets are getting locked on. So you're like attacking people and then basically triggering attacks like you would in, you know, the, the, the root of those games, games like Warcraft or, or, or games like Diablo or whatever. Whereas this game, you're basically shooting like you would in any other third person shooter. So it feels like, like it, act, it bizarrely kind of feels like when you were playing third person parts of Unreal Tournament, like the way it controls, like maybe you're in vehicles and stuff, it, it like feels super familiar that way. And um, maybe in, in the modern ones. Uh, but yeah, apart from that, it's essentially MOBA. You're shooting creep and you're mm -hmm. upgrading your person. And uh, yeah, so it's it's this weird kind of, I, I, yeah, it's like, it, it feels super familiar the minute you start playing it, even though you'd probably never played something exactly like this before. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the skills kind of translate, you know, it's kind of hard to, expand on the world of MOBA and skills, right? So a lot right. of things are very familiar. I think I played Gideon. His ultimate is pretty much, if anyone's played Dota 2, mm. it's kind of like, you know, Enigma's black hole, right? Like it just sucks everything yeah. in and it's supposed to be like a, something there for like, a, what I like to say, the wombo combo so that, you know, your teammates can come in and like do other abilities and you chain off of that. So it's cool. I mean, the action's fine. I, I don't know if it was just Gideon for me that felt a little slow. Mm. Uh, I know that his shift mechanic let him kind of like speed up a little bit, but yeah. you don't use that in combat. That's kind of like your mechanic to kind of get back and forth a little bit faster outside of like teleporting to your base. Yeah, it's weird. So you, you hold down shift to, well, there's nothing there about holding down shift to run, but you hold down shift to like engage travel mode. Mm -hmm. And I guess the, the sort of the negative part of that is that if you get caught, if you give somebody like, uh, catches you on the way in and hits you while you're in travel mode, you get stuck for like a couple of seconds, right? And they can just like pound on you for a while. Yeah, because if you come out of it manually, it's pretty fast. If you actually, mm -hmm. like, um, I just started figuring out if I just activated one of my, I had a leap power. I like mm -hmm. Mayhem. He's, which traditionally I don't really like tank characters, but for whatever reason, this kind of game I do, uh, he has a leaping attack. And uh, I would just press that and it would immediately get me out of the travel mode right. and give me an extra, like, 30 feet. So it's kind of a good combo. But yeah, if you, they, someone else interrupts it, then you're kind of, like, screwed for two seconds or so. And that's what's cool about this in terms of, because it, the, the MOBAs are games of inches, right? It's like how, it's understanding the range of your opponents, understanding the range of your attacks and how best you can do it. And what I've really enjoyed about this is that, like, the battles I've been having, like, against melee people, um, or maybe I'm, like, a dude with, like, two pistols, right? He's, like, mm -hmm. shooting people. He's pretty one of the good starter characters. And he has this sort of, one of his power-ups that you can upgrade is, like, a leap, uh, which can give you, like, a, you know, 10 feet on the other person. And I've been playing these people who have been, like, using melee, like, swings at me and just barely missing me. And I'm, like, jumping out of the way, like, like by, you know, it's, like, skimming me. And then everyone saw seeing the cooldown on this little leap attack, turning around, using it to get away, and then just, yeah. like, pounding on them yeah it's like it's and it's fun it like it feels like oh that's what i see when i see people play like really you know good level dota or lol mm -hmm. but this is actually in a 
game that I would play. Like I like okay, so first-person I, shooters and third-person shooters. That was kind of where I was headed next, I guess. Because MOBAs are kind of a thing that, you know, they were on the rise, right? Yeah. And then they kind of plateaued a little bit because there's just three heavy hitters that you can't really get by, right. you know? And then now, you know, Smite probably the first one to be kind of successful in like a third pers person mode so it's interesting to hear that you're actually more willing to play a game like paragon knowing that it's a moba because maybe it just has unreal roots or something like yeah that. like because i went back and like i never really played much smite and i went back um over the past couple of days to like watch a bunch of smite again mm -hmm. to see like first of all that game like i think it only came out like two years ago i think it was like april 2014 well maybe that was like the final version but it just okay. it looks it looks super aged <laughs> yeah, in well, a way that like the feedback, this game first of all looks good, but also the feedback you get on when you're hitting people is like, you know, you need, you know, you need that in games like this. Yeah. You need to be able to be mm -hmm. like, okay, I see. like in the division, like, you feel the numbers coming off them. You know, when your attacks land and you know, when you get that like really good feedback from the game. And this game has that really well, which I enjoy about it. So I was like encouraged to go around and try different here. I don't know what to call them, to call them heroes or whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can, f and because of that feedback via visually or audio or whatever it is, uh, you also like, for instance, looking at the, the the gameplay here of the various other attacks that are in the game. You kind of pick up on what exactly all that stuff is doing really quickly. Whereas watching all the smite footage, I was like, oh yeah, I get. It. Like if you put the time in, you figure it out. But like it wasn't that immediate thing. And when you're talking about a game with all of these heroes and all of these different ways of playing, that stuff can get super intimidating. Like with Overwatch, like that's another game that sells it really well. This yeah. game doesn't have that many heroes though. It feels like it looks like Not twelve yet. or like fifteen 12? or something. I, yeah. I wouldn't be shocked if there's going to be like more though, right? Mm -hmm. Like this is alpha. You know, you can always build. You can always have more, right? Like that's how you just get people to keep buying characters. Yeah, nothing stopping yeah. them. During the preview event, I had I had asked, and Epic said they plan on doing a lot of post-release stuff, which is which suits this the nature of these games well. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the thing, like it, all these games, like you had said that melange, it's kind of actually. I was I'm about as lukewarm as you can be when it comes to like Battleborn, Overwatch. I was having fun with everything, and then yeah. Paragon, but. And I wouldn't say I'm like extremely excited about any of them, but they I am coming around to the idea and like coming around to the fact that, oh, these games all just kind of add that that reflexive, like quick reaction thing mm. to the overall strategy, which I like strategy and I like shooters. Those are both like two of my main backgrounds. Like I kind of just starting to realize the potential of combining those, especially right. like when we can talk more about Battleborn. I'm looking forward to that. I can't speak to the overall quality of Battleborn, mm. but it does do some sep like interesting things. And then Overwatch is doing its own thing. Paragon is doing its own thing. And I'm actually kind of looking forward to seeing all the different like i don't know permutations that can come out of combining these genres mm. like, i'm coming around to it really fast i'm but it's, excited it, it's like the difference between dota and lol right if you're not in that like area and mm -hmm. playing those games like who cares like you, you wouldn't really give a shit and i feel like these games maybe it, it's just personal but like i feel like me and a lot of other people they were all just kind of we didn't really know that much about them we hadn't played them and it's like oh they're all kind of doing the same thing whereas now they are they all completely <laughs> they're completely different beasts mm -hmm. like Overwatch I love for loads of different reasons. Yeah. Like it feels more like Counter Strike to me. Obviously this is nothing like that game even though I was pulling them in together. Yeah. And the same kind of thing. I think my I don't know, expectation means a lot. My expectation of Paragon wasn't too high. It's like, ah, oh, it's free to play third person MOBA thing. Mm -hmm. It's coming out this year. But I'd I'd encourage people to play it. Yeah. Like I I was like I played a game which lasted 40 minutes and, w and went straight in and played another one. And like that doesn't happen with me and MOBAs. So yeah, yeah, yeah definitely recommend it. The PlayStation 4 PC is what the current alpha is in there. Right. They're doing some sort of paid alpha apparently. Yeah, you can. So I was trying it last night. Right. I, I Don't quote me on the date because I, I think it's right. I, I haven't slept very well a lot <laughs> since, but uh, I think it's 318 If you buy it, you get into the Founders Pack. And I think the cheapest one right. is $20. So I think you'll have access in like a couple of days if you uh, if you just at least mm. spend the twenty or or whatnot. But what's that money going? Uh, like what is it? Because the game's free to play and it's out in the summertime. I'm sure I didn't again. I didn't look card at packs. all the details. Yeah, but I'm sure it's like a card pack thing know. or maybe like a skin pack because there are like right, you can see yes. that there's like a drop down for Probably like that. do you want to pick normal Gideon or you mm. know your normal hero or like a variation of your hero. So I wouldn't be shocked if it's skin related or maybe a card pack thing. Um, something that hopefully doesn't alter the like gameplay, like not a pay to win thing, but a cosmetic thing. You know? Yeah. So I mean, yeah, I couldn't. Uh, um, hopefully, they know that that is not what you do <laughs> with these games. Yeah, the balance yeah. would just be trash if they did that, right? Yeah, totally. Uh, do you have any previews up on the side about Parkon? Yeah, um, there's one just about how like Epic's past with action games has influenced it. Um, it was about a week or two ago, some some headline like that. I don't remember exactly. Cool. But yeah, I had a pretty positive experience with it. Sweet. If you want to learn more about Paragon. Go to GameSpot.com. Look up that thing that Mike just told you about. Google mm. it. I don't know. Do the work. We haven't figured out a way of sending video links yet. So just 
do it yourself. Uh, and let us know if you're interested in Paragon. If you're not interested in Paragon, if you want to check out the beta, PS4 or PC, let us know in the comments below.